that second scripture this morning comes from Philippians, um, reading chapter 2, verses 5 through 11. Have this mind among yourselves, which you have in Christ Jesus, who, though he was in the form of God, did not count equality with God a thing to be grasped, but emptied himself, taking the form of a servant, being born in the likeness of men. And being found in human form, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even death on a cross. Therefore God has highly exalted him and bestowed on him the name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. So this is the culmination of the season of Lent as we head into Holy Week. We have done our weeks of preparing um, for the very center and the very essence of who we are as Christians and what we believe. And we start with this hymn um, that is included in Paul's letter to the Philippians because it is probably one of the earliest Christ hymns of the church. And we joined in speaking the Apostles' Creed and what we believed at the beginning of this service. And this scripture is one of our core windows into who Christ is and thus what our call is in following Christ. And, and it starts out with Paul urging the church of that day to have the same mind as Christ Jesus to be able to model ourselves after him and not thinking of power as something to be exploited, but instead emptying ourselves, even when it's death and even when it's death on a cross. And that word for um, exploitation, which in this translation was grasped, can also be translated robbed, that Christ did not use or feel use his divine um, power to be, think it was something that could be exploited, think that it was something that could be robbed, um, which takes us back to the very beginning of Lent um, with the story of Adam and Eve and original sin and trying to rob the creator of the creator's power to have an extra level of control ourselves and knowing what is good and evil and being like God. Because it is not in grasping or in robbing or in exploiting that we will find ourselves like God, but in emptying and giving ourselves away. And that is one of the hardest and the most terrifying lessons and pieces of our discipleship and our faith journeys. But it is the journey that we walk this week together. And it is the miracle that turns the world upside down, that in giving it all away, we can find more than we ever knew possible, that there will be a depth and a breadth and an essence to life and an abundance in that that could not happen without that emptying and without that humility and without that sharing. And so in modeling this hymn, I am reminded of a book that Portia Nelson wrote um, on there's a hole in my sidewalk because there are always going to be the moments that take us to our knees. There will always be the moments where we know without a shadow of a doubt that we can't handle what's in front of us, whether that be an injustice or whether that be a pain Um, And wherever it comes from, there will be that moment in our lives that is too much. And it is not something that we will be able to hold up under. And those are the moments where the decision is ours and what to do with that hole in our sidewalk. Whether we get stuck there and whether we try to keep up an illusion that we're fine and that we're still in control and piece things back together, or whether we open ourselves up to a grace that is greater than ours, to strengthen us, to give ourselves over as pliant mold 
to be recreated and reformed, even though we're not the ones that can control what we are shaped or formed into. This is the week that we follow Christ, who is about to practice this self-emptying love and modeling it with his disciples when he washes their feet on Holy Thursday. And it is a self-love modeling and an emptying love that he will call his disciples to as he sets the institution of the Last Supper and asks us to remember him and asks us to love one another as he has loved us and pouring himself out for us. And he will ask us to pray with him and he will model what it looks like to pray sweat and tears and blood, praying that this cup be taken from us, but then modeling what it means to even though not wanting to go through what is before us, to accept it and to allow space for God to work. This is the moment where we are called to pick up our cross and to follow Christ, to follow whatever peace and call whatever work that it is that God has for us that only we can do. Whatever passion and whatever brokenness that we will encounter, that God can give a witness through as to the hope and grace of what can be woven and created out of that if we but let God mold us and shape us. We have spent this journeying following um, many different um, persons in scripture and how they have encountered this hole in the sidewalk and how they have and have not let God save them. We start with Adam who's in this beautiful garden and everything's fine. That sidewalk is great, but then all of a sudden he falls into this hole and he's trapped and he can't see. And it is definitely not his fault that he's stuck there. It's that woman who told him. And then the woman, it's not her. Like, it's that serpent and we're passing the buck because we had nothing to do with this. This is something horrible that happened to us. And we're stuck there. And then we have the story of Nicodemus who can see something different happening and who comes to Christ to ask him because we know you have to be of God in order to, per in order to perform the signs that you are doing. But it's still at night and when Christ begins to speak with him about being born again, Nicodemus gets stuck and can't understand beyond that hole what Jesus is saying, um, and so remains there for a really long time. We know that he got out eventually, and there might have been other times that he got out because he was there to help bury Christ, but once again in secret in the cover of darkness. But then there's that woman at the well, right? And she came and she got stuck still in the same conversation of what do you mean living water and where is this well and you don't have anything to draw out from this water. But then something got changed and she was honest with Christ and in her conversation and owning um, the truth of her story and who she was and what had happened to her fairly or unfairly in naming that, in naming that whole she got out, and she got out pretty quickly. And not only did she get out of that hole, but she was able to run to her village to the people that she was running away from and trying to draw, draw water at noon without um, running into any of the other women who would have been there. And because of her testimony, because of her invitation to come and see what she has seen, Jesus stayed there. And there were lots of other folks who found their way out of their holes and who told that woman later that they believe now not because of what they saw in her or what she said, because they knew and saw it for themselves. And then we have the blind man that Jesus healed, that even when 
everyone fell away from him when his community didn't even recognize him because he wasn't blind anymore, when his parents abandoned him, when the Pharisees were examining him, when the very leaders who would, you would think were excited were absolutely um, anything but and exiled him, when he lost everything but still advocated and held to the truth that he knew. All I can tell you is that once I was blind and now I see. He got out of his hole immediately. In fact, I would posit that I don't even know if he was in the hole in the first place. Um, but saw it there and heard the people wanting him to be in that hole to be able to understand life but instead walked around it even if it meant um, losing those relationships in his life. And then we have Lazarus, the friend of Christ, and Mary and Martha, who is raised to new life. Because what it is, is about knowing the holes and knowing the temptations and knowing the pitfalls that are a part of our lives, of knowing went to cry out, Lord, if you had just been here, he would not have died. And even in those laments and in those darkest hours of everything crumbling around us, to still hear Jesus' voice asking if we believe in him. And to see Jesus' tears, knowing that our pain affects Emmanuel, God, with us as well. And so, whether, however we deal with these holes in our sidewalk, whether we get stuck in them forever, whether we own them and we get stuck in them repetitively, but we are able to get out, or whether we know enough to walk around them, we come to this week. And this is the week that Jesus is, tells us to walk down a different street and get rid of that sidewalk and that hole all together. And that different street is one of self-emptying, is one of coming in for salvation, but not in military power and might as the emperor would have marched in and in his white charger of a horse. I don't know if it was a white horse in perspective. That's too many movies in my head, and that's what I picture, um, of charging in and the triumphant entry and the show of power, but instead on a donkey comes in to be a king, but to be a king of a different kingdom, to show the power of walking down a different street, of not only with um, lead us, and not only stopping in that prayer of lead us not into temptation, but to find a way forward where that temptation isn't even present. And so we come to this day to a question of will we let God save us? That is what the cry of Hosanna means. God, save us. Be our Messiah. Be our anointed one. Show us the way that we can't even imagine because we're so stuck on the hole that we see in front of us. And you know who is shouting and who is welcoming him in? The crowds. Think of the Samaritan woman at the well. Think of the blind man. Think of Lazarus and Mary and Martha. Think of all of the people that Jesus healed. Think of all of those who found in him the salvation and the power to step out of their holes and to see them for what they were and to get trapped there no longer. Those who had that experience, who knew that taste of life and salvation, who knew what was possible, and who were ready to lay everything on that road, on that street, for Jesus to walk down to find that new way of living and of being together. Now, walking down a new street is not an easy thing to do. Because we know our way, and we can do it on autopilot, and walking down a new street requires an intentionality and a presence that a lot of times we're not used to giving and to putting into life. And so we're going to hit 
patches where as much as we want to walk down that new street, we find ourselves stuck in the old street with the old hole in the sidewalk. And we will find that this coming week. But we will also find Emmanuel, God with us. Forgiving us, as John said, even and especially then. And giving us a chance, even in a direct denial of Peter, even in abandonment of disciples, even when we just can't shout Hosanna, and before we know it, crucify is coming out of our lips. Even when we don't realize what we're doing, there is still a God who is ready to save us. That is the good news that is ours. That is the core of our faith and who we are as Christians. And so may this holy week, may we enter with all of who we are, naming the holes that are in our sidewalk, naming the embarrassment and the guilt of how often we have gotten trapped there, but also naming the power that is ours to claim for salvation and for a new way and for a new street to break into our lives and change who we are and transform us and our communities. This is my prayer for us. This is why we are going to be practicing this Easter offering. Because as we come in and the joy and the celebration and the relief of Easter dawn and knowing that God has broken the cycle of violence and ripped up that hole in our sidewalk for good and set us on a street and making a straight path for us that is possible and that is ours. That is good news that, friends, I hope we can't but not share. And so that is why we will be giving our offering to all of those who are stuck in their own holes and the disasters that have come their way and have rocked their world and have brought more than they can handle. And we will be that resurrection hope and that witness and that promise. And yes, we still need um, to run our church and to be able to care for one another. So if you want to designate um, offerings to Epworth and to our general fund and our mission, then we ask that you note that. But anything that is undesignated will go to this resurrection work so that we as we claim Christ's salvation, we can also claim our role to share that joy and that hope with others. And so may we commit this week to walk this journey together, to step by step follow Christ in the self-emptying of not considering equality with God as something to be exploited, but who rather emptied himself and was obedient in humility even to death, to death on a cross. That is the love and that is the call that we will step into this week.